So I wanted to do a quick video today about the mental model for uh, go routines. Um, in particular, kind of the relationship between go routines, because this is something which even among fairly experienced uh, go software engineers, um, I see, I see gotten wrong or at least kind of forgotten. Um, and as we'll see, this can be quite important. So often what I'll see is people thinking about go routines almost like um, almost like JavaScript, kind of the, the JavaScript execution context and the way that it handles asynchronous programming. So for example, in JavaScript, um, you can uh, execute asynchronous code um, and you can kind of await the result of it. Um, that's called that's called awaiting a promise in JavaScript. For those of you not familiar, um, and, and that will essentially uh, happen. Um, so it will happen asynchronously, and then the context will continue once that has been finished. Um, because it's asynchronous, um, the, the the JavaScript um, uh, event loop may may continue and execute other contexts in the meantime. Come back to it. Anyway, that's not relevant. The point is that when a promise, um, when there's an error thrown inside that asynchronous code, um, what it does is um, it throws an exception that that's basically handled as part of the promise. And the promise um, is basically rejected. Um, you have these two terms in JavaScript, resolved and rejected. So resolved is asynchronous code finished with, with uh, you know, success and rejected, which is failure. Um, and that rejected is basically handled as part of the promise. So then you can basically catch that promise result with something called a try catch clause. Um, and that means that whatever happens in that asynchronous code can be caught by its parent, by the caller. And I see a lot of people thinking about Go routines in a similar way. Um, for example, so. For example, if we, if we write out here um, using the using the playground, something similar to that example I've just given um, of JavaScript, let's write a Go routine um, and let's uh, you know I don't know let's sleep for now um, for a second. Um, okay. Um, this is just for example, we won't run this just yet. But so in the JavaScript example, in the JavaScript mindset, right, which JavaScript is a very different language and, and Node.js, um, very different principles, single threaded, as uh, sorry, you know, asynchronous, um, very different to go. Um, but if we're thinking of the JavaScript mindset, if uh, inside this Go routine, um, we panicked with something. If we were thinking about the JavaScript kind of mentality here, we would imagine that this panic would propagate up to the to its parent Go routine here. Okay. Um, so as an example, let's get rid of that for a moment. What happens when we panic on a normal uh, Go routine? Um, it, you know, out, out um, setting aside any parallelism for now. Um, and let me get rid of uh, this for a moment. Um, what would only happen, obviously, it panics and it crashes the process. Um, and panics, by the way, aren't, you know, shouldn't be thought of as acceptable. We shouldn't be trying to catch them. We should be removing them from code. But, but let's imagine that we've got a panic and we want to be able to resolve just because, um, you know, I don't know, there might be a situation where, where we're unclear where the panics will happen. The way that you recover from panic, the way you prevent a panic from killing the process is using the built-in recover. Um, and the way that you uh, uh, would typically write this and go, in fact, the only way that you could write this is inside of the first statement, uh, you would call this recover, um, and then you would check uh, if the recover is not nil, um, then you would, for example, print. You should probably do something more but let's say panic recovered. 
as I say, if you are actually doing this, you should have a good reason, you should be doing something more than just printing the value. Um, otherwise, you're ignoring panics which shouldn't be in the code. Um, so let's uh, bring that import statement back and format this because it looks ugly. Uh, so now what we're going to see is when we panic, actually this recovery statement will prevent the process from quitting. So you can see that the panic recovered. Um, and that means that, say this was uh, inside func1, uh, if we called func main, uh, and it's called func1, um, it would then continue. Um, let's print hello. Okay, so when we run this now, we'll see panic recover and hello. Whereas when we, when we remove the recovery, we're obviously not going to see hello because the panic exits the process, okay? Now, that's enough background about how the panic statement kind of works, the effect of a panic. So let's imagine now we're thinking about a go routine. So we have this uh, recovery in place here. Now, let's imagine um, that we're going to call, call a go routine um, and it is going to panic. Now, if you're thinking in the JavaScript's mindset, you might say, well, that's fine because um, this panic is called inside function one. You know, the go routine is executed inside function one. Its parent, you might say, has a recovery handler. So this panic will propagate up to function one. It will be recovered and then we will print hello. So let's see if that's true. Ah, of course it's hello because I didn't actually wait for this to finish. So let's just, uh, let's add a, a wait group here just so that we can, actually no, tell you what. Let's just add a sleep here because I don't want to wait. I don't want to, uh, second times two. Um, I don't want to use a wait group because I want to prove the point that the entire, um, the entire point of this doesn't matter whether you're even waiting for this to finish. So this could be a fire and forget go routine. It still has the same impact. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this go routine. We're gonna sleep for a couple of seconds to make sure this gets executed. And then we're gonna print hello. So again, in the JavaScript mindset, you will say this panic occurs here inside, but it's par the parents of this function as a defer, so it will be recovered. We'll wait two seconds and we'll print hello, okay? That's what we would expect if we're thinking in the JavaScript model. Um, and I need to import time. But as you can see, the panic isn't recovered and the process does crash. So we don't print hello, we don't wait for two seconds. And the reason for this is that Go routines, they don't have a hierarchical relationship. There is no parent and child go routine. When we execute a new go routine here, they're only siblings, okay? So they're all go routines and we can have millions of them and they don't relate to each other in any way apart from ways that we define with weight groups and channels and other, you know, go primitives. What that means is if you don't have a recover inside the go routine itself, its parent, which it doesn't have, will not recover for it, and you will crash the process. Now, as I'm saying, crashing the process might be, and usually is the right thing to do when you have a panic, because pa panics are not acceptable, uh, are not accepted um, as part of a runtime. Crashing is the best way, is the best feedback loop to um, get yourself to remove them. But it's still worth being aware that Go routines do not have this hierarchical relationship. And therefore, if you are using recover, it will not work unless the recover exists inside the Go routine itself. So as you'll see, as soon as I add this defer in here, panic recovered, and then hello. Um, and just to, um, prove that this was actually this with panic which recovered 
you can see like, the go prefix is there. So, what that meant, by the way, you, you obviously don't need this now because there's not going to be a panic in here. Uh, and there we go. Uh, let me format this, it's not very clear. There we go. So, <laughs> to summarize and to reiterate again, because as I say, this is it's an easy mistake to make, and it's one I see the most experienced Go programmers make. There is no hierarchical relationship. This JavaScript style um, asynchronous mental model where, where errors propagate up the, the stack um, doesn't apply here because Go routines, they each have their own stack. Um, and a panic in any one of those will crash the process. What that means is if you're running a web server, um, as, as you know, I've seen so many times, for example, if you're running a web server and you're doing lots of concurrent work, a panic in any one of those Go routines will kill the process unless there is recovery in that Go routine. You know, for example, if you've got um, some request path and you, you spawn off lots of Go routines, a handler in the central request Go routine does not cover you. So test carefully you cannot have this centralized pan uh, panic recover um, as as a fallback